This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now, back in the day, man, I used to be a super biscuit-headed grower, man. I used to have a biscuit head with gravy, mashed potatoes, and all types of things um, when I first started. I used to be doing all type of things outside of the boundaries of aquaponics, and that's because I didn't know any better. I had zero experience growing zero experience um, growing plants or vegetables or fish or anything else growing. Then one day I came to the light and that's when everything changed. And I realized that aquaponics is not meant to be designed to be crazy fancy and to do all these um, extra things um, that a lot of people are trying to do. It's not designed for that. And every time you try to do that, you will fail, and your aquaponics setup will make you miserable. So with that being said, um, we're going to jump right into today's video. Um, it's submitted by a gentleman uh, by the name of Jason who has already submitted a, a video previously, um, but he has additional questions, so he submitted another one, um, and we're going to go ahead and see what we can do um, and what advice can be provided um, for the question that he's asking. It has to do with... Uh, uh, adding crayfish and algae in his aquaponic system. So let's jump right into it and see what we can get out of this. Hey, Brooklyn. Jace, uh, Jace here. What's going on, Jason? Woo! Uh, I wanted to give you kind of an update. I had a question about something for you. I have the um, deep water culture uh, aquaponic hybrid system. Uh, I've seen a video uh, a month or two ago. It's been up for a couple months now trying to work a camera but that's where my my plants go i got a couple getting ready to go into seed uh, or i'm germinating seeds right now damn i'm having a hard time showing it to you um so they go there i got a pump in there feeds all the way up to that plastic tub up there i uh, got a air a spray bar up there it sprays in lava rock uh pumice stone where you call it comes back out into my fish holding tank we started cycling, we're probably, I don't know, 80, 100 fish or so. We've probably got 50, 60 of them left. We lost a bunch, but I mean, not quality stock. Uh, you know, cheap feeder fish from local uh, fish store. It's not even that a great, great of a fish store. So, uh, lost a bunch of them to the cycling process, which we, and I lost a bunch to just you know, bad genetics, bad fish, I don't know, but they're all happy, healthy, they're growing. I'm um, getting ready to take them off the flake and put them on pet, uh, pelleted food. But my question is, um, in my deep well here, there's a little bit of debris that gets in there, the uh, stones from messing with the pots and just things of that nature. Um, I'm not going to take it out because it's so porous. So I figured it would be good bacterial you know, colonization stuff going on there. But I thought maybe get a couple crayfish in there, uh, get it to sift through and make sure there's no... They can eat all the detritus matter because a couple of fish got down there, whatever, whatever comes through a pipe. So as far as adding the crayfish in there, let's go ahead and get to that right now. Yes, absolutely. You can add crayfish in there. You can add any other type of crustaceans in there. Um, but it depends on what outcome you're expecting to get out of these um, these creatures. What are you expecting out of that? So in your case, you're expecting them to clean up a few things, um, a few of the detri uh, detritus um, as it enters in there, a few org uh, organic matter, some fecal matter, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, you're, assume you're, you're expecting it to clean up that. And they will do that, um, but you have to remember that as they consume the fecal matter and the organic material, they produce their own fecal matter as well. So adding the crustaceans into an aquaponic system, if you're trying to do it for filtration purposes, it's not going to be effective. It's not because they're going to produce their own. Now, if they didn't produce anything else, if they didn't produce their own fecal matter, by all means, let's go for it. But the fact that they just break down, all they do is take the, uh, the fecal matter, the larger pieces, and then they just excrete smaller pieces, which still have to be treated, which is why you still have, if you see any type of um, a recirculating system with uh, crawfish or lobster or uh, shrimp, they're always going to have to still have filtration. You're going to have to have proper filtration. There's nothing that is going to, um, um, that, that can cancel out proper filtration. Nothing naturally, not at the densities that are, are stocked at in aquaponics. Maybe in nature where the density, the stocking density is extremely low and, you know, the, the, the organic material buildup is not, um, as, uh, doesn't have much of an impact 
But in aquaponics, you know, the stocking densities is just, relying on something natural is just not going to work. It is never going to work for a filtration purpose. So you can throw a few crayfish in there. Maybe you have a small system, so it may fit one, maybe two, because they require a large, a lot of space. You know, a lot of them are cannibalistic um, and uh, they don't do well, you know, tightly uh, grouped together. But you can throw a few in there, maybe one, two maximum probably, and then um, raise it up. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't really get much out of it. You know, it's not going to really do too much. But like I said, you can throw it in there, but it's not going to solve a filtration problem. Um, it's not going to do that. You're going to have to have proper filtration leaving out of your fil uh, your fish tank. You need a proper filter set up there um, to remove anything from even getting into your deep water culture setup. Um, and that's the missing link right there. So the crayfish, you know, like I said, it's, it's um, you, you know, it's optional. It's pretty much optional. It's not really going to do anything. Um, you know, it's not going to really have a severe impact on your system. Um, it's just pretty much an optional and an additional thing that you can add to it. Um, but, um, I don't, I've never seen anyone have any extreme success off of adding the crayfish in there and let, you know, unless you have some animal or some creatures in there that, you know, the crayfish will prey on and then you're having a problem with these extra, uh, creatures in there. Um, and that they're, uh, the, the crayfish are there to kind of eat them, eat them up. But as far as filtration, you know, you shouldn't expect anything, uh, anything much out of having crayfish or any other crustacean in there or, or you know, any other thing in there uh, other than proper filtration. So I was thinking about that, and then I have a little bit of algae growth. Um, it, it, um, you can see where the water comes in down here. There's a little bit of algae growth in there. And uh, there's a little bit of the pipe that comes out here. And uh, I was just thinking maybe, maybe get a couple snails in there. Uh, you know, see if I can get a complete, a more complete ecosystem going. So it's the same thing with the snails. So one, rewind. I remember on the first video, I remember your video, the first one, we looked at the mesh thing that you have there. And you're always going to have an algae problem with that mesh thing in there because the light is allowing, or, or that mesh thing is allowing a lot of light to penetrate. So you're always going to have algae. Uh, a, a one fix that you can do with that is to replace that mesh thing and have something solid there and make sure your water is not, you know, splashing on top of it. Um, that, that would be the, a, quick fix for, a quick fix for that. Actually, a proper fix for that. Um, a, a snails, um, that wouldn't, you know, it's not really going to be that effective. You know, you're going to have a lot of algae that's being produced and you would need a ton of snails to keep up with the algae um, that's produced in there. You're better off, you know, just building it correctly, getting the correct um, mechanics in there, and, and setting it up properly and trying to eliminate it as much as possible other than putting snails in there and, you know, are relying on them because they're, once again, they're going to produce their own fecal matter. They're going to start uh, um, uh, breeding and uh, multiplying in the tank. They can start, uh, uh, um, they can also start clogging up pipes. It's a lot of things that can happen um, when you have a lot of snails in there in your system, getting all in your pump and all types of things. So um, best bet is just to try to um, cover it up prevent the splashing, prevent the light from penetrating as much as possible. Now, one thing that you have to understand is that algae, you're never going to be able to uh, completely eradicate algae. It's just too efficient of a plant um, uh, to, to, for it to be completely eradicated. So you should always expect some algae in an aquaponic system. You, it's just the way it is. They have evolved to be very efficient at um, uh, growing off of very little light and very little nutrients. Like the, the, the algae is going to grow before anything else, before a plant, uh, a vegetable, a lettuce, algae will be there. So the algae coming out of your pipes, um, coming into your fish tank, you know, um, putting snails in there, I would think that that would be more problematic than uh, beneficial, um, especially if it's only that part right there. But you, you definitely want to, you know, cover up your tank, um, your fish tank, cover up the, uh, the DWC uh, tank, and um, just you know, cover up the, the main uh, parts of your system to prevent large algae growth. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to have some, if you don't have it already, you're going to have large algae growth in that DWC system. There's just too much nutrients in there and too much light that's, being, um, uh, that's penetrating in there, and algae just are just going to thrive in there. They're going to thrive in there. They don't really need much light or much nutrients to thrive, but... That is just a you know open field for algae to come along, and, and uh, pretty much 
you're going to have to have a massive amount of snails to deal with that problem. That's going to be a continuous problem that I see occurring. So I would just fix that as much as possible. And, you know, you will go to the grave trying to get rid of algae. So some algae is acceptable. You just don't want it in the, you know, large buildups in your tank, uh, your fish tank or in your DWC setup. So um, once again, now you can add these things in there. You can add the crayfish in there. You can add the snails in there. Some people add shrimp in there. You can add all that in there, but just do not expect much. And one, you're not going to expect to grow many of them, no matter which ones you, uh, you put in there. Shrimp, crayfish, lobster, whatever it is, crab. You put any of those in there, don't expect to get much production out of them um, at all because they just require too much space um, uh, for them to properly develop. And uh, don't expect proper filtration from them either. You just That's just something that you should just not expect. Expect that you're going to need to get proper filtration and that if you add any of these other, you know, uh, 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 creatures in there, organisms in there, then they're just pretty much there as just an additional bonus, I guess, or, you know, whatever. You raise them up. Maybe you're going to eat one of them or something like that. But you, I wouldn't expect much out of those. I would not expect much out of those at all. Um, so I'm not going to sell anybody a dream. It sounds great in theory. Add all these things in there. Uh, but it's just not the way it works. It's just not the way that aquaponics is designed. And, um, you know, th this is a, it's a natural ecosystem, but we're pushing the limits and the boundaries of, of what nature can do on its own. That's why we need proper filtration and we need all these other uh, mechanisms that humans create. We've already pretty much surpassed what nature can handle on its own. It's not meant to, to, to be this dense and to have, uh, you know, all these things growing in such a small area. We have to have additional stuff um, for aquaponics to properly work, and we just cannot rely on just a natural, um, uh, a, a totally natural way of doing things, unless you're just, you know, if, if, it's just not the way it works. So hopefully that helps you out, Jason, man. Um, uh, it's pretty much optional. Like I said, do whatever you feel like uh, you want to do in that circumstance. Um, me personally, I'm, unless I have a problem that I really need to add one of those in there, like there's other critters or something in there that I need that is having, that are really problematic. I wouldn't add any of those in there. I just wouldn't add any of them in there. Um, but, um, it, it's not really, uh, anything that I'm totally against or totally for. Um, it's just, I just don't see the, the, the benefit just doesn't outweigh, um, the, the problem in, in this instance. Um, so hopefully that helps you out, Jason, man. I'm glad you submitted the, uh, the video once again. And um, uh, if you have any other questions, just go ahead and let me know and I'll be sure to, uh, to help you out. So for anyone else looking to get their uh, video uh, featured on the uh, Ask the Aquaponics God show, then just go ahead and submit it to Brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com video form. Um, and then I will go ahead and help you out. I still have a lot of you guys in the queue. I haven't forgot about you. There's a lot of things going on, but we will get it done. So this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!